Hello, everybody. I hope you can see me. Uh, I want to say hello again and welcome to a new edition of Eoprera Talks. Uh, my name is Jesper Falkemo. I am currently the president of Eoprera and I'm also a professor of strategic communication at Lund University in Sweden. Um, for those of you joining us for the first time, I would like to say some short words about Eoprera. Um, Erpera is uh, the European Public Relations Education and Research Association uh, with a long history, actually since the 1950s. Uh, today we gather academics and some professionals, uh, primarily from Europe, in an organization with around 550 members from 50 countries. Uh, so we're we're not just a European organization, actually, we're partly global, I would say. Um, the focus is on fostering a community passionate about research and education in public relations and strategic communication in a broad sense. We uh, arrange every year an annual Congress. Um, this year, it's gonna take place in Bucharest in Romania uh, around September 11 to 13 and in 2025, it's actually going to take place in Lund in Sweden at my university in September of 2025. We also have a lot of thematic networks. We have projects uh, and different activities, uh, which you're all welcome to take a look at. If you go into our website, you can, you can see everything we do. Uh, today's webinar is uh, extremely interesting, I think. Uh, it's about the state of strategic communication and public relations in Latin America. Uh, a very interesting topic, also connected somewhat historically to the start of one of the projects through Aeropera, the European Communication Monitor. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, give the floor to the moderator of today's Aeropera talk, uh, Professor Juan Carlos Moleda from University of Oregon. Uh, so please, uh, I, I wish you good luck with moderating this interesting session. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Falkheimer. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. I am uh, at the University of Oregon in Eugene, Oregon. Um, I am the Dean of the School of Journalism and Communication and co-director of the Latin American Communication Monitor. So it is my pleasure. Uh, could you please uh, put the presentation up? Perfect. So in this, um, this panel is about the state of strategic communication and public relations in Latin America. And we have uh, three outstanding participants, um, uh, Claudia Labarca uh, from Chile, Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile, uh, Fabiana uh, Mariuti, uh, Universidad de, de Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Jose Alessandro Oliveira, uh, CEO of Select Communication, also uh, from Brazil. So let me talk a little, a little bit about the L a LCM or the Latin American Communication Monitor um, that um, we have been uh, conducting this study for 10 years. It's the largest scientific study of strategic communication and public relations in the region and uh, belong uh, to a, a to a study that is, a, is, a, is part of the Global Communication Monitor organized by UPRERA, uh, bringing more than uh, 60 institutions, 80 countries, and 50,000 professionals. In the case of the Latin American Communication Monitor, uh, we have researchers for, from um, 34 of the most prestigious universities in the region, and also here from the US and, and Spain, um, five editions, um, in this uh, latest survey, we reached out to 37,000 communication professionals, um, and we have achieved uh, any, a significant impact uh, uh, in academic uh, references, citations, books, uh, and downloads of the report directly from our website. So today I will be highlighting uh, some of the important components of the study, but, the, but uh, you can download uh, the this, this study uh, from uh, our website, the Latin American Communication Monitor. Uh, as I said, uh, this uh, Global Communication Monitor is uh, organized by UPRERA. And 
uh, in addition to the Latin American Communication Monitor, uh, uh, there are three other reports, the European Communication Monitor, the Asian Pacific Communication Monitor, and the North American Communication Monitor. The latest edition of the North America Communication Monitor is, is, is already out. Uh, we have a research team. Uh, as I said, I'm the co-director. Uh, Alejandro Alvarez Nobel is the, also the second co-director. Co he is at, at the University of Malaga in Spain. Um, also part of the research team is uh, Professor Angeles Moreno uh, from Spain also. Uh, Professor Andrea Ataides uh, from Brazil. Ana Maria Suarez Monsalve from Colombia and Marco Herrera from uh, Mexico. We have a group of uh, sponsors, uh, as you see here in the slide, um, especially uh, Banco Centroamericano de Integración Económica, Institute for Public Relations, and the University of Oregon, uh, in addition to Campus Creativo, Revicom, GIAC, uh, from uh, Spain, Univers Universidad Rey Juan Carlos, Universidad de Medellín, and Red Laco, and Joy PR. So in the methodology, uh, we we are basing uh, this um, this presentation in in valid responses, uh, complete responses, uh, 1,134, and uh, representing 20 countries. The majority of the representation is from South America, 75 percent. Uh, Mexico is also represented by around six percent, and Central America, 19 uh, percent and the Caribbean. Uh, in terms of a sample profile, uh, most of the participants are female, which is also the representation of the demographics in the industry, 63% 63, 63 female, an average age of 42 years old uh, for these participants. Uh, what is really interesting in the education level that more than about 56% of participants um, hold a master's uh, a degree or equivalent, um, and even up close to 2% uh, a PhD uh, degree. 41% um, belong to a national communication or public relations association. That's also very important. Uh, and, and then they also are part of other uh, organizations or other associations, which is, is, is relevant for our discipline, 58%, uh, because we work for different sectors of the economy. So that makes sense that participants also are members of other type of associations. And also, it's very important that this, uh, this group of parti uh, participants in the study, uh, they also hold leadership positions, team leadership, unit leader, 35%, and also department heads or agency CEO or consultant, 26%. So, so it's a really significant percentage of the participants. Um, and I'm going to highlight uh, some of the findings in these areas, uh, the diversity, equity, and inclusion, digitalization or ComTech, external consulting, empathetic uh, leadership, excellence in communication, salaries, uh, strategic issues uh, for the following years. Let's start by the diversity, equity, and inclusion. And DEI is mainly discussed uh, in Brazil, Puerto Rico, and Chile, but it's lesser important according to the participants in, Vene in Venezuela, Peru, and the uh, Dominican Republic. 50% uh, uh, of professionals engaging in, in global discussions about DEI, um, which indicate you know, an interest in the topic, but only 20% 20, 20 position is as one of the key strategic issues of the next three years. So, even though the AI is debated, but it's not considered one of the most important issues that is fa are facing uh, the professional and professionals in the region. Um, what is interesting is that uh, there are more intense discussions uh, for executive positions, about 60%. Over 80% of professionals emphasize that actions related to DEI are uh, and, and consistency between words and deeds on the topic are crucial uh, to maintaining the trust of internal and, and external stakeholders. Empathetic leadership um, uh, makes a difference. Um, we have uh, data and co positive correlation that empathetic uh, 
uh, leadership is positively correlated to higher levels of engagement, job commitment, and mental well-being when working with empathetic uh, leaders. In terms of ComTech, it's, it's really interesting because it's, it's really impacting the industry worldwide, uh, but uh, it's less debated and applied trend in, in Latin America. Only 30% of communication professionals closely follow the debate of ComTech. Um, and, but between 65 and 70% believe of uh, the transformative impact of the in the profession and 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 the practices work methods uh, only 11 percent of communication departments and agency have fully adopted comtech so definitely the, there is a challenge here and most of the deficient deficiencies are structural barriers and communication task processes unprepared for digitalization uh, in terms of Comtech, as I said before, only 11% of professionals consider, the, consider themselves as innovators, uh, and 19, close to 20% and early adopters. So it's about 30% um, of uh, innovators and early adopter. In terms of external consulting um, in a strategic communication and public relations, uh, um, the data shows that it's becoming increasingly more relevant, diverse, and complex, uh, while uh, ensuring uh, quality is, is a great challenge. Uh, and the challenge um, in, in that uh, was pointed out by participants uh, concerning uh, consultancy are weak governance, leadership, and internal processes and the lack of competent uh, people and knowledge. So these are the challenges, but at the same time, there is an acknowledgement that the need for external consulting for communication with stakeholders is growing. You know, 73% of participants agreed, and then the consulting sector is becoming more diversified and complex, 75%. In terms of strategic issues uh, of communication and the alignment with organizational objectives, and has been always a, a strategic issue for our discipline. Um, are, um, the, the top three issues that are important in the strategy is strengthening the role of communication function in supporting top management decision making. So always very important we as communication professionals being trusted advisors. Linking business strategy and communication strategy has been always an important consideration and dealing with the speed and volume of information flow, uh, which is um, a never ending uh, challenge in our uh, uh, discipline. Uh, uh, very interesting in the, in the bottom three uh, issues are that are no you know, consider uh, the, 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 the top um, concerns for the following three years are supporting diversity, equity, and inclusion, digitalize uh, communication processes with internal and external stakeholders, and establishing flexible and remote work environment uh, is the low priority for professionals. So it's very interesting that, the, that it's very related uh, to the challenges um, the profession and the industry is facing concerning, concerning ComTech that uh, this component doesn't really raise, raise uh, to the top um, of concerns. In, in, in terms of distributions of salary, 73% earn less than $30,000 annually. So it's very different that um, here in the, US, in, in the US, for instance. Um, and also the analysis of the new edition reveals nonetheless about, despite of, the, of this 73% earning less than $30,000 annually, we see that um, an increase in, in communication directors earning between thirty and sixty thousand dollars annually, so more uh, four percent more than the previous edition. So that's that's a good sign. And professionals from Puerto Rico uh, having the best salary distribution, which makes sense uh, because uh, Puerto Rico uh, is very close to the U.S. market.
only two out of uh, every 10 uh, public relations department are excellent. So only 23% approximately. Um, and this is always uh, has been a trend <laughs> globally because it, it, it takes a great amount of efforts uh, and resources to become an excellent department. Only 23% um, optim optimally uh, fulfill both executive and advisory functions while performing competitive successful, successfully compared uh, to other organizations. Um, uh, those, those leading uh, this department demonstrate higher commitment and empathetic leadership, reflect uh, in the well-being of the teams, uh, reducing the likelihood of resignation, you know, uh, increasing recruitment, uh, increasing retention, um, they approach digital transformation with uh, more intentionally uh, and excellent departments uh, lead innovation and early adoption of communication technology facing uh, fewer challenges uh, for implementation. I want to finish this uh, brief highlight of the study uh, by discussing 10 trends um, um, that um, in, in certain way I mentioned before. So uh, the first one is that actions on DEI uh, reinforce a stakeholder trust. The second, that empathetic leadership increases engagement, improves mental health, and reduces employee turnover, so more retention of employees. Then digital contact uh, will have a transformative impact on the professions and work methods. Uh, that the benefits of using ComTech in various ways await the potential drawbacks and risk. As five, that external communication consulting, as I said before, represents half of the activity and becomes more relevant, diverse, and complex. And as I said before, but there are some issues of quality of services and, and advice. Six, as threatening the advisory role of communication is key issue of the profession. Seven, the need uh, to connect organizational strategies with communication deepens, and this is always have been an important uh, uh, challenge and, and, and activity of communication uh, teams. Eight, sustainability remains outside the top five priority in communication management, different from uh, the, our European uh, colleagues. Nine, uh, women are learn less, uh, the gender gap Pay, pay, pay gap uh, continues to be a challenge uh, in the profession. And finally, 10, um, the uh, pursuit of excellent communication, a growing sector of competitiveness uh, for the sector uh, is, is always uh, a, a challenge. And, and only 23% of co uh, communication departments are considering themselves excellent. So these are the, some of the highlights. Um, now uh, I will like the participation of the panelists. I will be asking them questions and one, 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 one by one will answer the question. And perhaps if, if, you, if you have additional follow-up, I feel free to do so. So the first question is uh, in uh, the light of the Latin American Communication Monitor, how much are the contexts and organizations in the region changing? and what changes have the greatest impact on strategic communication. So let's start with Fabiana uh, Mariuti. Open You're your muted, uh, Fabiana. Yes, sure, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. Uh, by my analytical uh, knowledge here when i have evaluated the monitor comparing to the past ones i see that in brazil the greatest impact on strategic communication pr are mostly related to the internal communication scope i say that because it has to do with the governance role which is growing in brazil for in firms and industries and also um dot down uh, i believe that the di EI, the diversity, equity, and inclusion trends number one of the monitor, which Brazil uh, is in on the highest no, percent in discussions and following debate, has also to do with welcoming training for this kind of uh, new employees that the companies are having. 
So internal communication is a huge uh, key world in Brazil. The second one would be the corporate brand management, which has to do with the firm reputation and related to their market position. So uh, mostly and mostly and becoming bigger and bigger, companies are looking for their own good image and a consistent reputation uh, among all their stakeholders. And the third one would be the press relations. I think PR uh, uh, professionals in Brazil and region has also this opportunity on press relations uh, skills and partnerships because of also DEI and also sustainability, which is trend number eight. You know, uh, Brazil is only almost four decades focused on democracy and human rights. So this is also the topic, the hottest topic in Brazil right now, and companies need to be aware of that. So I would match mostly those two trends, trends number one and number eight. Uh, then comes to number two, which is leadership with corporate communication is related to public policies and Brazil is trying to implement, plan, plan, planning and implement more public policies related to these topics, I said before. And then considering the communication technology trend in number three and four, I think Brazil is also uh, making it sure students who are learning communication and PR programs are much into data and metrics for embasement on their planning. And when we talk about trends number five and six, Brazil is composed of many Brazils. Yeah, we have five regions, five councils for PR main council. So uh, we need to focus on the differences, cultural values and sensibilities of those different demographic groups and communities. I think I would stop now. Hello. Hello. Did you, okay, Rosale, did you hear can you hear me? Uh, Jose Alessandro, can you answer the question? Yeah, sure, sure. There you go. Uh, at first, good afternoon for everybody, for my partners in this broadcast again, and good afternoon for everybody's watching us live right now or after. Thank you so much for your time with us. Uh, at first, I need to express myself. I'm so proud to be here, so proud to be here, and also so shy to be between three PhDs, Fabiana, Claudia, Juan, thank you so much for this opportunity. So let's go about changing and impact our job. I believe the the ComTech, the ComTech, the communication technology always will promote or boost or changing. But my point of attention for this question is the rise of empathetic leadership. Because I face this in my day by day. I deal with 11 schools principals and their and their coordinators and my and also my employees all day i really know about about much be uh, a empathetic leader is important and promote engagement and reduce turnover it's very important i talking about and also talking about my school's principles i, I also talking about me and also talking about my school principles I work with the schools, all right? I, I am public relation and especially with work with the schools. Uh, this question, I talked about the power of listen. It's simple. Listen your employees, talk to them, talk to them about your goals, talk to them about your day by day. And it makes so different, even to reduce employee turnover. We saw this in this, in this survey. I remember one time, one time I like to, to say some storytelling to, to introduce, to talk about this, this issue. I remember one time I was, I was working and my employee is, is near from me working, also working. And I, I feel he's so sad. And I think my, by myself, what happened? And I go to, to him and say, what happened? You are not, you're not good. You're not working well. You're what? You're not working like, uh, like every day. And, and he told me, he, he started to cry. Oh, I lose my, I lose my girl. 
whoa, stop, let's talk about it. You can you can work like this. Go home and take a coffee or take it, take a water and be calm and come back tomorrow. And that is when I'm talking about empathic. It is empathetic. It's look for your partner, is look for your employee. And those days, he tell me that one day my employees with with him are talking about many how many times they are open their heart to me and that's one of the great impacts being more empathic and and i think that is more that's the biggest impact impact that we're gonna face in our communication that we're gonna change you're gonna change our way to work because we we are accustomed to work not with empathy and now we need to look for this i'm facing this that's my my contribution for about this question thank you yeah thank you so much um Jose alessandro and let's listen to uh, uh the chilean perspective from uh professor lavarca uh hi well uh, i'm so happy to be here i've been I've been known Juan Carlos for, for a while now, uh, but I'm very happy to meet for the first time uh, Fabiana and Jose Alessandro. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm Claudia Lavarca, professor at the Uni Universidad Católica de Chile in Chile, and I have been working with a, a Latin American communication monitor for the last two years. Um, I have a broader perspective on this question. I don't know if it is allowed. Um, and we may want to discuss this from a broader perspective regarding um, how, how the context is changing or pressing organization. We need to take into account the particular context of Latin America, uh, which is very different from Europe or the United States and may explain some of the results, like, for example, the low interest is sustainability. Uh, we need to remember that we live in countries with sometimes we have shaky democracy with very low trust levels and uh, especially institutional trust and uh, with a growing political polarization. And at the first, we can say, what is this related to how we perform our tasks in organizations? And my 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 thought is uh, there is a relationship. When you live in countries with low levels of institutional trust, it may be more difficult to engage in policies to expand trust across different stakeholders. You know, so we need to take in, in account those challenges, uh, those particular contexts that we as Latin Americans uh, live. So what I I put that the context is influencing by increasing increasing low trust institutional trust and this is around all Latin America uh, from the last fifteen years political polarization um, the rising of populism uh, digitization and and I want to stop here in the digitization because. What happens here is we all acknowledge, according to the result of the Latin American Monitor, we all acknowledge the need uh, to embrace uh, digital technologies, but at the same time, we're not prepared for it. And um, I don't know if, if in your countries, in your university, do you prepare future professionals to, to handle big data, to handle um, artificial artificial intelligence for example so those are the because we need this is a a survey is a photograph of the moment that may change but you we need to contextualize this number and that's why i try to do with the first question so um the challenges poses posed by our own political economic and 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 uh, even social political context in Latin America may explain some of the results. You know, um, it, of course, in, in 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 poorest countries, it's more difficult, and we will have structural problems to uh, embrace digital changes. For example, that's why uh, governments are lagging behind, uh, according to the data, 
than transnational companies or, or you know, or NGOs, for example. Uh, what is the role of NGO? Why sustainability is not a critical topic? Because those are topics that are very, very important in the global north. But here uh, we are trying to keep our democracies alive. So I would like, and I will stop here because we have more questions. I would like to have this broader um, view of where do we perform strategic communication? Where, in which cultural, sociopolitical, and economic setting our companies are operating? Perfect. Thank you so much, Claudia. And I completely agree with you. The context of Latin America is very different than the context. Well, it's not different, but uh, has some nuances uh, in relation to Europe and the US. But in terms of technology, I can say that, yes, the profession is facing challenges, but education is also facing, facing challenges, especially because technology is moving so fast that uh, we are struggling to really find the ways to handle uh, you know, what we need to teach and how we need to practice using digitalization. So, uh, Jose, Alessandro, you will be first in, in answering the second question. So, the second question right. is what trends uh, or concerns do you foresee our professions uh, uh, face in the region in the coming years? Well, thinking about the LCM documents and thinking about so our day by day working with communication since the last 30 years, I believe the big concern and trend is face and use the contact, the technology. I'd like to highlight one important and relevant information about that I saw in the report. Only 11% of our communication department and agencies have fully adopted contact. Only 11%. I need to invite you to create this image in your brain right now. Imagine 10 companies and only one have technology fully adopted. It's, 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 uh, <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible. It's such a big concern. And I say more. I say more. Are you ready to more? <laughs> There's more than this. AI. AI. At the, same, at the same time, it's a concern and a trend. But AI is not a concern to be, to be a bad thing. No, it's not a bad thing. AI, it's such a new and good and awesome big box full of, full of tools for us, for our communication. Uh, the, very first, the very first time I used chat, chat GPT, for example, last year, um, and I asked for it, for the chat GPT to create a short text to an Instagram post. And, and I think to myself, what a wonderful word, like the music. Because it's, it's amazing when you, when you ask something and, and they do it. I immediately sent a video of ChatGPT working to my employee, a young journalist. And he tells me something that I know other communication professionals, PRs and journalists uh, think the same. You are, Yen, you are think the same. He said to me, boss, is that a creative way to fire me? <laughs> and, I, and I said, no, no, no. It's a creative way to say to you that finally we have our calculator, man. It, it, it's, like the, it, it's, it's something like this, the chat GPT, for example. It's like our calculator. But pay attention. Calculator. 4 plus 9 is 13 points. Points. But calculator don't know if 13 is good, is 13 is, is, is bigger, is 13 is, is enough, only 13. ChatGPT make a correct text, all right? But you need to put heart, you need to put your soul, you need to put creativity in the text. And that's, and that's uh, I ask for my employees, do it every day. Use it, ChatGPT, yes, use it, but make the text. Uh, put your creativity there, put your soul, put your heart, because you are inside the, the school, for example, or the company, you are inside and you know about it. Put your soul here. But you must, you must say to me, Jose, no one talks about AI on the survey. Yes, the survey was made in the middle of 2022, right? And we start to know AI in 2023 and start to use in 2024. So when I 
when I suggest where where you read uh, where you read come tech, think about AI and run to use to know it, to know about it. We have lived in the same revolution we face in 19. Do you remember when the internet become everybody? Whoa, internet! What what I have to do? I, I need to I need to have a website. What I have to do? And if you don't look for this, you're gonna stay on the same place. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jose Thank Alessandro. Um, Claudia, you're next. Uh, so what is your insight uh, from uh, your perspective? Okay. Uh, regarding the trends and concern that I see in the profession, I would um, I would dare to say that we are kind of in a turning point because what I see uh, reading and trying to put some understanding of the numbers and the data, it's um, we are in the search for legitimacy, uh, legitimacy within the company in the sense that we understand we need to work uh, with the top levels of the country, but at the same time, professionals do not feel that the work that they're doing are worthy. And because that data is in the well-being part, but, but you have to connect it with the other data. How can you advise top level uh, executive if, if you feel your work is not worthy? So um, I think there's a lot of work to do here. First, as you say, Juan Carlos, in the education, how we do prepare our students to deal with management to deal with the top authorities in your organization, whether this is it in politics, in, in companies, in NGOs, it doesn't matter. How do we prepare these people not only to uh, manage big data and AE, which is super important, but how do we gave, give them legitimacy? So I think the key work here is how, how do we build legitimacy legitimacy in our own profession, profession uh, inside the company and self-legitimacy, if you, if you want to put it that way. Um, and uh, the other thing I want to say is uh, in this search for legitimacy, one of the things that is, that is real good is to understand how management has been changing and how that affects our profession. Because if you see it, empathetic leadership, it's something kind of new, you know? And it's, it's kind of the, a, new, uh, um, a, a new way to manage that we need to understand because all the benefits Juan Carlo already uh, said in the beginning. But at the same, and, and we, and we relate that kind of management to women. But women have a gender gap pay. Uh, so here, we, I think we, we had a problem here. We want a, a female empathetic management, but then we don't pay them enough. Uh, so that's why I think the word here is legitimacy. How do we build self-legitimate, especially for women professionals? Uh, and how do we build legitimacy within the organization we work for? Thank you so much, Claudia. And I completely agree with you how the different uh, aspects of this uh, study inform, uh, you know, each other. Um, you know, they are no, they, they are no isolated. And, and, and as human beings, we are complex. Uh, so if you are not being recognized in our work, definitely this is going to impact the way we manage up and even we manage down or horizontally. So Fabiana, uh, you are next. And what is your uh, uh, opinion? Thank you very much. Yes, I agree with both my colleagues here. Um, we need to follow those trends, but also they can become concerns and related actually to teaching and research, in which I would like to answer your, this question with three key points. The first one is the need for more research funding in Latin America, investment on specific projects, on providing students real experiences with all 
these issues and actually international partnerships. The other one relate to what Professor um, Moreira has said, the salaries issue. Brazil has shown in the survey that 74% earn less than $30,000. This is with or without taxes. This is something else we need to think about. And in Brazil, this means double our minimum wage. So uh, it used to, it is right now 74, but I saw that the last eight years it's decreasing. It used to be 75%. So why this is happening? And uh, just one um, very updated information about the women earn less or more issue, which is the gender gap. Not so much in university level teaching in Brazil. Uh, we've done this uh, new brand chapter in a Emerald book, which showed through our sample of seven professors, senior professors in Brazil, that in teaching jobs, it's very pretty much uh, likely that those salaries. But when it comes to the corporate level, we can see 20% less or more. So this is an issue that is a huge concern, but it becomes something we need to uh, focus in more and more. And then as trends and opportunities related to number trend number seven, which is the communication link to the business, con, uh, bis, the business car business and the strategic plan. This is something we need to check on that. And also I see as an opportunity, our trend in Brazil is the political communication consultancy. Brazil has more than 20 political parties in the country. So it's a, as PR and communicate, strategic communication seen as a powerful and authentic voice uh, as a profession in the country. I think we need to be more into this, which is not easy for to be, uh, uh, because we don't learn much on the TV, the programs, the high, high institutions. High uh, level institutions. So, something we need to think about how much we should move on our CV update and, and modernization relating models and uh, subjects. Our syllabus probably needs to move on together with that. So, we go now to trend number 10, which is an opportunity for improve our teaching and researching and also Latin American interchange programs and projects. I do believe those can help us up with more uh, powerful presence on the business arena, which most of times our PR or strategic communication positions are not taken so serious as they should be. And it always starts inside the university. So once again, as a, as a uh, lecture, I have to focus on the teaching issue, which universities come together and discuss more their own uh, accomplishments, difficulties, and trends for the profession. Thank you so much, Fabiana. Excellent insights. And I do agree with you that uh, the, the, the advantage of having uh, studies like this, um, you know, handling important issues that the profession faces is that we can use those these insights for both education, but also for continue uh, training of uh, professionals mm -hmm. in the field. So students and professionals can take advantage of these conversations for sure. So the, the last question, before I ask the last question, I want to remind the viewers that uh, they can ask questions by writing um, in the chat box of the video. So if you have a question, please start writing those questions in the chat box. So as soon as we finish answering this question, um, and in fact, um, let's try to use only no more than five minutes right now uh, so we can have uh, a space uh, for questions and answers. So let's uh, start, I believe, with Claudia. Um, or yes, Claudia will be first. Uh, okay. and, and we are talking about the, the, the Latin American Communication Monitor and 10 years. So what do you consider is the most important contribution um, of the study uh, to the development and growth of the industry and academia? Well, I, I think there's one obvious contribution, which is the data and, the, and we can be able to have the longitudinal data, which is very good. But but I would go farther, I would say one of the best contribution that I have seen in, in these two years I've been working with you, it's how you can engage 
the profession and the academia, uh, which are normally separate worlds. And, and you would say academics just think about and philosophize and write papers and, and they're worried about citations and everything. But I think this applied research, which is this kind of research, is super valuable because you can put these two worlds together to make the profession better. Yeah. So you take us outside the university, but also we give you the data and the analysis to understand what is going on. So I would say, and I'm going to finish because you say just a little bit, uh, uh, and I'm a very obedient person. No, that's not true. I will say that the connection between these two worlds is one of the most significant uh, gifts, I would say, that the Latin American Communication Monitor can give us. Fantastic. And I do agree with you, uh, Claudia. And uh, Jose Alessandro, uh, talk about the contributions of the study for the development of the profession and, the, and academia. Claudia Labarca tells everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's everything, it's everything. The, that connection is everything. So uh, I, I need to, to make a, a difference between the, the good things to industry and to academy. First, to industry. I believe that the most significant LCM contributes to growth and development of the industry is to know, is to know that we are not alone. And when I saw a chart or a number that express something or some strategy that I also use, it's like very important. It's like a very important colleague. It's like it's like a very important colleague uh, saying to me, "Go ahead, you are on the right path." Uh, please, Maria, uh, I, I need to share to you uh, a photo. Uh, uh, just a second to share a photo with you here, share screen, and that's, are you seeing? Yes. Yes, I'm gonna talk about this. Um, I am a school PR specialist, a public relations professional that work with the schools. And in 2019, I was in Washington attending to the 68th National School PR Seminar, 68, 68 years that they have this event. And I was there and meet 1,450 school PR professionals. And that is, and that, this sensation that I wish for LCM, thousands and thousands of professionals living the, the same adventure with our happiness and, and our pains. And this thing is, is awesome. You look for everybody and everybody uh, take the same work, take the same job. And <clears throat> uh, we need to stop the photo. It's amazing photo. <laughs> stop, thank you. And to Academy, I really hope and appreciate that this report, this study could be read, could be debated, and the students for all academic, at first at the undergra undergraduate students. Uh, they need to know the industry before need to face the industry. And it's so usual. Uh, I face trainees or new employees that start to work with no idea to hands on. They need to hands on and they need to know this data, uh, this information about the industry. They need to know the industry before they face the industry. That's all. Jose Alexandro, thank you so, so much. And I'm um, um, waiting for more questions, but uh, one uh, comment that I see here in the chat uh, relates to, yes, the context we face in, in Latin America and in, in each of the countries of the study is also affected by global context, by the global north. So how you, do you see that relationship between the local situation but plus things happening in the region or in other parts of the world? 
and 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 this question goes to anyone so at this point i'm not going to be calling you by name so just feel free to participate and we have about seven minutes for this session of questions and answers So who wants to go oh, first? Okay, I'll, I'll break the ice. Um, I think one of the things we should look at first is to look at the property of, you know, consultancies, um, consulting companies, which are normally attached to big global uh, organizations around the world. Uh, and since the, the data show us that consultancy is growing, uh, we may take a look at how much uh, these uh, companies are being influenced by the global policies, for example. Um, I, would, I would take that point as an important one. And also, I would take a second point, which is how our teaching and how we form, sorry, I keep talking about students, but it's, it's what I do. How much we as scholars are influenced by models, thoughts, um uh concepts of the global north let's let's think about the excellence model which is a, a very important model the model in public relations but maybe we need to adapt it to our you know uh, so we can measure accordingly um so um we also are are are, are are working with this global north standards in a context which is not north and and this tension needs to be managed and handled i would say so perfect claudia yes uh, i'd like to reinforce this contextualization regarding the global south and not only the 20 countries have has participated this year, this last year, because even though, as we said before, we are in Latin America, we have different complexities and realities in each country, and mostly in Brazil with our hugeness geographical size, we have many Brazils inside one Brazil, which also brings those huge differences considering teaching, considering job opportunities, considering uh, even research uh, funding. So uh, this is something else that I totally agree with Professor Claudia that we need to adapt models and uh, frameworks from, of course, the top researchers in the world who has been publishing, who has been uh, making evidences of this theory and practice uh, alignment through science, but we need more and more research in local. It means here, right here, right now, in this space, space and time, as we so much learn and investigate in scientific studies. So I would like to reinforce this, our con context differences and complexities. I agree to Fabiana, I agree to Claudia. We need to use more this, this kind of survive. We need yes. to share more this kind of survive. Yes. Uh, and also, you need to have more professionals answering these questions. We need to look for this. Yes. We need to, we, we need to, we send this to 37, 37,000 of professionals. And yes. we have eight, six professionals answers, all right? And we need to look for more than this, more and more. And I think this is, is, is a good thing to, to think and to share this with the students, all right? And the professionals, also the professionals, mm -hmm. because we face some, uh, we face something, I, I believe every communication, communicate uh, professional face this, that uh, sometimes we have a survive, sometimes we have our books that we read, we have our knowledge, and we face our boss or our principals and say we need to do this and and he say to us no i don't like this i don't want this way and this never happens with for example with uh, a doctor yes. a medician <laughs> when you say uh, we need to you need to make a surgery in your heart you don't you don't say no no i don't need this 
because you know he is the specialist and we communicators face this all days and this kind of uh, survive help us to face this totally agree with you uh, jose alexandro uh, and the fact is that um the most we work on our own uh, capacities and knowledge uh, the, the more entrance we have to the decision making uh, seat. Uh, uh, the fact is that we become trusted advisors, not only because of the way we conduct ourselves, but also because of the reflections and the knowledge and the type of insights we can provide to management um, in, 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 in all type of organizations. So we have two more minutes. I want every one of you really 30 seconds, 45 seconds, uh, your closing remarks uh, to this audience. Uh, and, and thank you, everyone who is um, is seeing us, uh, is watching us uh, in YouTube uh, live and through this channel. So it has been a really rewarding experience. So closing remarks. Uh, let's just start by Fabiana, as we did at the beginning. Yeah, sure. Uh, I do agree with Jose and Claudia and the Latin American Communication Monitor is a treasure for us, academia and uh, corporate life jobs. So I think we should focus on those details for each kind of sample regarding each country and in depth we have more results that can bring us all inspiration to move on and be glad we are uh, communicators uh, as pioneers in this Latin American monitor we serve. That's what I'd like to. Uh, Thank you I so much, uh, Jose Ale Alessandro, and then Claudia. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question, please? I was the question raising... is your final, the closing remarks. Uh, what do you want to leave uh, to this audience uh, when we say goodbye? Ah, all right, all right. I, I, watch, I, I want to thank you so much for your attention, for your time, and keep in touch with us in our Instagram, keep in touch with LCM to the next one, and answering the questions. We need more professional answering the questions. Yes, please. Yeah. Hi, hi, Claudia. I was going to say the same, basically, to invite all this audience, not only to answer the question, but to spread the word in the sense that um, if we make this more, uh, if we have more legitimacy, if we work together, if we share our knowledge, if we have these places to discuss and, and, and have an, different thoughts and perspective, we are going to grow not only as the LCM as, as, a, as a survey, but also as a profession. I think this kind of things make us more legitimacy, which is what we need to face the challenges we have been talking about. Yeah. Fantastic. I will ratify this key message. Your participation, the participation of professionals in this really relevant multinational study uh, is not only the opportunity for you to express your opinions and views and experiences as a public relations or communication professional, but also is your contribution to the development of this important discipline, both in academia and in the industry. So it's, it's not just the opportunity to express yourself, but also the opportunity to make contribution. So thank you so much to you, Prera, for this opportunity. Thank you, Fabiana Mariuti, uh, Claudia Labarca, and Jose Alexandro for your participation. It has been a pleasure. And, and to the audience, uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. And goodbye. Adios. Adios.